and the IT resources. Uh, HSPII program has to be re a reiterative process uh, and it must be ongoing for it to be of value. Uh, IT systems uh, and applications have to be continually examined and evaluated. And um, uh, one of the, if not the primary risk to any HSPII program is the lack of understanding uh, of the individuals most involved with protecting the data, and that's the IT professional. And one of the things that I just couldn't resist because, um, uh, you know, I know that uh, uh, it, you have to have some humor, is we have to have a, re a way not to protect data. And I just love this video, uh, so I had to link it in. Uh, so this is how we don't protect our data, um, uh, unless, of course, you want to make sure that no matter what you do, nobody uh, will be able to get to the data because you've completely... Um, uh, encrypted it in a way that no one uh, will be able to get to it. All right, not destroyed, but encrypted. So, any questions? And uh, again, I know that this is very theoretical uh, compared to many of the uh, the other presentations uh, that you've been in. Um, uh, but it is uh, again a uh, an ongoing field, and it's a field that. Uh, that I believe is going to be um, uh, uh, very relevant as we go. Yes, sir. I, I assume it's working for Boeing. What, what prompted you to look at the PII versus assets? Is it just your personal experience? Or? Uh, well, the personal experience uh, is is the main uh, was the main factor, uh, but also shortly after I started uh, at Boeing. Uh, there were two laptops, and it didn't affect me. I, I wasn't impacted by it. But there were two laptops that, within six weeks of each other, uh, had been lost slash stolen. Um, so, you know, it was it was out there, and because of that, all of a sudden the the impact on the personal side, right? Okay, what do you, as an IT person, what do you have to do? And you started seeing more policies and more um, procedures that were flowing down from upper management for uh, protecting the, the PII uh, that's out there. Yes, ma'am. How much do you think um, that trend has to do with um, corporate culture and training? So the, which, which trend? The trend of? So that, that's a good question, uh, and the the trend of um, uh, of management having a better understanding versus um, the individual. That trend is, uh, I, I think, it is a lot of culture, uh, but at the same time, I think that that as the culture starts to change, where we uh, we really start, uh, and, and I, I dislike using this word because it's one of those key words, but as we start to empower the, the employees to make their decisions, et cetera, that it will, uh, that, that trend hopefully will start to shift over. Uh, but at many organizations now, it is, um, uh, there are, uh, other programs out there where if they see potential for uh, data to be lost or ways to improve programs, that there are different reward programs, uh, et cetera. <coughs> so, uh, so I think that it is partially culture, um, uh, but I'm hoping that, that we start to break that culture and we start to move to a more open society where that where we all can look at the data, look at the programs, look at what's out there and figure out uh, what's best to um, for the program. So here's a uh, here's a snippet, so to speak, is that because of the need to protect the data, many organizations are and I had a friend of mine who was talking to me about this the other day. Um, uh, many organizations are putting their, um, their PII data 
uh, onto uh, secured services or, or secured servers uh, behind Citrix walls, et cetera, right? And so the individual, um, uh, his, name's, his name's Lyle. Lyle told me, he said, you know, uh, I'm working on this, uh, on this new project where we're replacing everything, and um, uh, yet my management's coming down telling me that I have to spend 300 hours to migrate all of my PII data from the application that's going away over to the secured servers. For And I said, well, uh, and Lyle doesn't work at Boeing, so I said, okay, well, Lyle, how long until you replace your, your new system? And he said, well, it should be first quarter of next year. And I said, well, when is your deadline for moving the data? And he said, uh, by, uh, by December of this year. I said, and what's it going to cost you? And he gave me some numbers. And so for a three-month period... You know, we have to be smart, I guess is what I'm saying. Just be, you know, if, if we have an application that's going away and we're bringing a new application in, whether it be through a, um, a cloud type uh, uh, or a COTS hosted um, application, we have to pay attention to what it is we're doing and make sure that that new application contains the security that is going to protect the data and then protect the data in the existing system as best we can. Yes, ma'am. That okay. So so when when you're talking archiving and uh, the data, that is a huge pot. That unfortunately, um, uh, I don't think either of them can. Uh, either of the three up here can answer. But what you have to look at is there are government regulations behind how long you have to maintain data <clears throat> for different applications, uh, et cetera. So, um, uh, you, you know, you still, wh whether you're going through Iron Mountain or, or whatever, right, it, if you're retiring an application and that um, you, you still have to maintain that data for X number of years depending on, you know, was it a finance application, was it an HR application, what, uh, was it a military contract? Uh, military contracts are really cool because it's 13 years uh, uh, from the end of the contract. So... Uh, once it's up, then uh, then there are uh, there yeah yeah. So like your average company, Well, I think uh, hopefully hopefully we've gotten past that, and um, you, you know you see shredders as part of everyday homes now. Uh, you see, um, uh, you know, you have some, but you have these companies that are that are storing the data now. Uh, that when it is time, uh, they uh, they do destroy uh, where um, the old uh, the old tapes that from the mainframe systems are being burned or shredded or whatever. Uh, hopefully, in an eco-friendly uh, manner uh, as much as possible. But yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, and, and again, depending on where you are, it's going to make a big difference. And then depending on how big is your company, is it a global company? Is it a? Uh, is it just here in Massachusetts? Is it in uh, just in Kentucky? You know, whatever. Uh, or uh, so you know. Then then you go through and you find out what is the highest of all of them and or try and combine to get the uh, the purebred but again that's why most companies go through uh, these data storage companies and <coughs> and they uh, they handle a lot of it so uh, kind of as a plug this is um, uh, uh, a book that I am uh, a contributor to um, uh, it's called the refractive thinker uh, it has um, uh, uh, thir 
13, 13 or 14 chapters. Uh, it is on Amazon. Uh, and um, uh, this one deals with ethics.